Good morning, everyone. Abydos. All the great pyramids, temples, tombs, thousands of years of history, culture and art. It all started here. People come to Abydos to see the magnificent great temple of Seti I and the enigmatic Osirian. However, Abydos is much more than that. Today we'll see less visited, but also wonderful sights. We'll see the recently opened temple of Ramesses the Great with its beautiful reliefs. But before that, I'm taking you for a walk through the nearly 2000 years older, early dynastic necropolis of Abydos. Let's go! At the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries, Flinders Petrie's excavations uncovered the tombs of the first Egyptian kings, the pre-dynastic ones, such as Scorpion and Bull, belonging to the late Neolithic Nakada III culture, as well as the early dynastic ones, like Narma, Aha or Jer from the first and Kasakemwe from the second dynasty. The so-called Cemetery B is located at the southern end of the Abydos necropolis, about two kilometers from the Temple of Seti. It is the oldest royal necropolis in Egypt. We can say it's the predecessor of Old Kingdom Giza and the New Kingdom Valley of the Kings. So I wanted to show you the tombs from the first dynasty, but it turns out that this whole area where the tombs are and the wall are under some archaeological supervision because I think the American archaeologists are still working there. Unfortunately, we can't film this place, even from a distance. I tried different things and it, they said it's not possible, it's not allowed. Anyway, I was fortunate to film for you a real gem of early dynastic architecture. Shunet el Zebib, the enormous walls of mud brick, 12 meters high, 5 meters thick, surround an area of 137 by 77 meters. It actually consists of two rectangular walls. The outer ones imitated the facade of a royal palace. Although it resembles a defensive structure, it's not. It was actually part of the Kasakemwe funerary complex. Kasakemwe reigned 18 years as the last ruler of the second dynasty in the 27th century BC. He was the father of the famous Djoser, the first ruler of the Old Kingdom. Kasakemwe means the two powerful ones appear, which may refer to Horus and Set as state deities. According to some Egyptologists, in his time there was a civil war between Upper and Lower Egypt, between the followers of Horus and Set. Kasakemwe ended in fighting and reunited the country. The wall surrounding the funerary complex of Kasakemwe's son, Djosa in Saqqara, although much larger and made of stone, resembles this structure. As we know, the centerpiece of Djosa's complex was his famous steppe pyramid. I wonder what was here? Australian Egyptologist David O'Connor, who led the reconstruction work, as you can see some of the bricks were added to protect the walls, found the foundations of some mysterious structure in the very middle of this enclosure. It's unknown what it could be. I'd like to take a closer look, but it's quite a dangerous place. There are no tourists here and a pack of local stray dogs found shelter behind the walls. Probably the House of Ka was located here, the precursor of later funerary temples where the statue of the ruler was worshipped. Kasakemwe is known as the first to erect his monumental stone images.
famous buried ships were discovered exactly here by O'Connor in the 90s. Lines of mud brick were initially thought to be the remains of the walls of unidentified buildings. American archaeologists, led by O'Connor, discovered 14 boats embedded in these mud brick sarcophagi. They were attributed to Kasakemwe. But studies of the artifacts buried here began in 2000, point to hundreds of years before the construction of Kasakemwe's enclosure. They may have belonged to Aha the second ruler of the first dynasty from the 31st century BC, who was said to have had a similar enclosure in the area. Aha, or Hor Aha, meaning Horus the fighter, is believed to be the son of the famous Nama, also called Menes, who, according to ancient traditions, was to unify Egypt and begin the first dynasty. About 300 meters to the northeast, we come across the ruins of the so-called Portal Temple of Ramesses II, the remains of Mastabas from the Middle Kingdom and a massive Second Dynasty wall. Anyway, some researchers claim that Aha and Nama are the same person. Unfortunately, we still know very little about early dynastic times. We do know, however, that Aha made a pilgrimage to the sanctuary of Neith, the warrior mother goddess, at Saiz in the Nile Delta. We also know that he buried his mother, Nate Hotep, in the Great Mastaba in Nakada. He was also supposed to lead perhaps the first expedition against the Nubians. Ptolemaic sources attribute to Aha the erection of the royal palace in Memphis, which then became the northern seat of the king. But now I can finally take you to the temple of Ramesses II. In contrast to the unusual Temple of Seti, which I've already shown you, link in the description, Ramesses erected a typical Theban mortuary temple. The first courtyard is in very bad condition. It was originally fronted by pylons and red granite statues of the king, for which Ramesses was famous, as you already know. The courtyard also featured a kiosk or a freestanding chapel. After the death of the last Tutmosid, Tutankhamun, the royal power fell into the hands of high officials, not related to the lineage of monarchs. After the short reign of Ramesses I, Seti and even his son were not sure about the continuity of the new dynasty and the subject's approval. Hence the immense construction initiatives in the most sacred places for the Egyptians. The widespread cult of Osiris, protector of the dead, supreme judge and savior, was crucial for the Egyptians obsessed with life after death. It was Abydos that constituted the destination of pilgrimages from all over the country, a national sanctuary. Ramesses had to permanently go down in the history of this city, not only a religious center but also the cradle of royal power in Egypt. 
Abydos, the home of Osiris, the first legendary king of Egypt, was the place where the Ramesses had to finally prove their divine right to the throne. As in the neighboring temple of Seti, Ramesses places a list of kings in one of the chapels. The Ramesses appear on it as part of an unbroken chain of rulers since the time of Narma. Although the temple is a ruin, the upper parts of the walls do not exist. Their lower part is surprisingly well preserved. The reliefs are in good condition, many of them have retained their original colors. These are fine examples of my favorite, Ramasid art. It seems that the artists of Ramasid's time paid more attention to the coherent composition of scenes than to perfect proportions. Conventional, slightly outlined contours, individualized figures in dynamic poses, but as a whole, a perfect harmony. Ramesses definitely had his taste. Already in the Great Temple in Abydos we can easily distinguish Seti's reliefs from those completed by him. Sadly, we can't see the outer walls of the temple depicting battle scenes. Around the temple, archaeological work is currently underway and tourists can only move within its walls. Here we can see an ancient graffiti depicting the local god of war, Anhor, who actually has a chapel in the temple. The first hypostyle hall, also called the Hall of Epirians, had eight pillars. You can get from here to the shrine of the aforementioned deity, Anhor. The second hypostyle hall leads to eleven different rooms. Initially, Ramesses inherited from his father his unfinished projects in Abydos, such as the Great Temple of Seti, or the Portal Temple, on the foundations of which Seti's name was discovered. Ramesses completed his father's buildings, but decided to erect his own mortuary temple in Abydos, northeast of that built by his father. Ramesses named his temple the Mansion United with the Wide Land. In 2020, in the southwestern corner of the temple, its foundation deposit was discovered. Food offerings, tablets and vessels, all bearing the name of Ramesses, even tiny models of construction tools. 
His throne name on items buried before construction began is unequivocal proof. This is not another building he inherited from Seti, but the first temple of Ramesses the Great built in Egypt. This is where the great builder of Ramesseum and Abu Simbel started. The most characteristic element of the temple, the 5 meters tall entrance, made of black granite, leading to the first hypostyle hall. Please just take a look at how exquisitely crafted these reliefs are. Fecundity figures, each representing a particular nom or region of Egypt, arranged in long rows below the major reliefs. Such figures symbolize the abundance bestowed on Egypt by the gods. But why did Seti and Ramesses carry out such great construction projects in Abydos? Since the time of Djosa, the pharaohs resided in Memphis. The age of the pyramids marks the period of the solar cult of Ra and the sons of the sun, the divine rulers. Abydos lost its former importance at this time. The instability following the collapse of the old kingdom led to the rise of new religious cults. The first intermediate period and the middle kingdom saw the widespread flourishing of the cult of Osiris, the universal savior who was supposed to provide eternal life not only to rulers but also to common people. So Abydos flourished in the Middle Kingdom as it was there that supposedly was the tomb of Osiris, the mythological first human ruler of Egypt. I described to you the mysteries and annual festival of Osiris that took place in the Middle Kingdom in my previous episode about Abydos. We know that the culminating moment of the festival was the symbolic burial of the god's golden figure in his own tomb in the desert. And although thousands of crowds attended, only the pharaoh, accompanied by the highest priests, could approach the tomb. Until today, a lot of controversy is caused by the location of this most sacred tomb in Egypt. The root of the festival led to the necropolis of Um el Kab, so it was probably one of the pre-dynastic tombs. The first archaeologist to study these tombs before Petrie, Emile Amelino, found a large basalt statue of Osiris from the Middle Kingdom in Jer's tomb. The Egyptians may therefore have regarded his tomb as the burial place of Osiris. By the way, the boldest alternative researcher's theory I've heard is that Osiris' tomb was dismantled by Seti and moved to his new temple. Yeah, they meant the Osirian, of course. Interestingly, more than 300 people were found in the tomb of Ahas' son, Jer, sacrificed so that they could serve the pharaoh in the afterlife. Probably during the funeral of Jer, his servants were strangled to be buried with their ruler right away. Fortunately, this practice didn't last long, ending with the first dynasty, and human sacrifice was soon replaced by Shepti figurines. The first scientific research on the temple was undertaken by August Mariette in 1863. A group of black granite statues was found by him in 1869 in various parts of the temple, because it was broken into fragments. In 
it most likely represents Osiris, Isis, Horus, Seti and Ramesses II. After the reconstruction, the sculpture was placed in the alabaster chapel. Its walls were once entirely covered with alabaster on a sandstone foundation. The chapel served as a sanctuary dedicated solely to Osiris. In one of the northern shrines, an unusual relief of the goddess Hecate, usually depicted as a frog, shown here with a human face, next to her Anubis, also with the head of a human, not a jackal. This is the only known example of Anubis with a human head in all of Egypt. Three main shrines are flanked on both sides by two pillar chambers known as the statue halls featuring ornamented niches. The second room with nine niches for statues. In one of the niches there is a beautiful scene of Ramesses making offerings to Osiris, accompanied by a winged pillar, Jed, protectively covering the god with its wings. Excavations in the temple area are still ongoing. The last high-profile discovery of this year is the discovery of a huge number of mummified animals from the Ptolemic period – sheep, goats, dogs, cows, gazelles, mongooses and 2,000 mummified ramheads. Most likely these were votive offerings made in honor of Ramesses, who was worshipped in Abydos even 1000 years after his death. It was during the New Kingdom that the cult of Osiris grew into the state and national religion of the Egyptians, bringing about a rebirth for Abydos. Ahmos, the first ruler of the New Kingdom and the founder of the 18th dynasty, chose Abydos to build his funerary complex there and erected the last royal pyramid of Egypt. This wasn't the only pyramid in Abydos. We are still finding cemeteries from the New Kingdom. Especially characteristic Ramesidic tombs had their own chapels and pyramid superstructure, like the ones we saw in the El Medina in Western Thebes. These cemeteries were established on the processional route of the statue of Ahmos, who during the entire New Kingdom was considered by the inhabitants of Abydos to be a local protective deity, the personification of Osiris. To show you his pyramid, I'd have to come here during a break in archaeological work. And summer in Abydos is really hot. Local authorities, although friendly and helpful, still look at self-guided visitors with suspicion, as there are simply not enough tourists here. A day trip by bus to see the temples of Seti and Osirian is certainly not enough. I recommend coming here for a longer time. I've been to some magical places before and Abydos is definitely one of them. There's something special about this place, I can't explain it, but I can feel it. I will certainly come back to Abydos to show you more. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, please subscribe to my channel, like and comment, it means a lot to me, as it's hard for small channels like mine to break through on YouTube. Thanks to all my patrons, you are the best. If you would like to support me in my ancient site travel, you can join my Patreon community, I put the link in the description below.
you on another ancient site.